Welcome back to Exquisitely Aligned. You may be on your path to having it all, the house, family, money, and world travel even, when suddenly something shatters your ideal world. It shifts your perspective. You are grateful for all that you've achieved, yet you realize or maybe even decide having it all isn't all that. It may leave you feeling unhappy, unsatisfied, or unfulfilled. You're left wanting something even more fulfilling, but it's hard for you to find the words. When you describe it to others, they just don't get it. They try to pacify you. And that, well, that may leave you feeling a bit guilty. I get it, I've stood in your shoes. Hello, I'm Gina, the life artist. Today we'll be discussing the art of creating beauty with your image or should I say through your image, looking your best from head to toe. When we express our truest self outwardly, we are creating beauty. From this place, we are able to share beauty with others. That's how and when you make the world an even more beautiful place. A world that inspires us to be the best version and the best vision of ourselves. In last week's episode, we talked about beauty being more than simply in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is naturally occurring in nature. We can consider it a gift from our creator. I have found that we spend our time, energy, and money, our precious resources on things that we see value in. The reason I'm so excited about this series, The Art of Creating Beauty, is because I wish to share with you the value of beauty. People say it's superficial. I think beauty is super fuel. Inspiring us and others, there's this exchange that happens, like an energetic exchange, a reciprocal exchange between two things. As we value beauty and invest our time, our money, our gifts, our talents, you get it, our energy to create and surround ourselves in beauty, those experiences and those spaces fuel us to be our finest self. Life becomes easier. We inspire others. Let's jump right into it. Your signature style makes you uniquely you. As a bold soul, you are unafraid to express your truest self. And that's what I'm hoping to encourage you to. What does your style say about you today? This is a little something from psychology today about first impressions. It said, we size each other up very quickly. First impressions are influenced by the shape of our face, our vocal inflection, our attractiveness, and our general emotional state. First impressions, they can be difficult, hard to to change. It takes a mere seven seconds. That's it. What message do you want to send in those seven seconds? Sure, life becomes busy and we sometimes forget, or maybe you never really gave this any thought. I get it. But today I want to spend the time giving it the thought that it deserves, and share some easy to implement ideas to help you express your truest self outwardly. Because first impressions, those seven seconds, they're lasting. Not to mention you, what you see when you look in the mirror and the feelings that you feel, the feelings that evoke when you see your inflection, reflection. That's powerful stuff. That can be the difference, in my opinion, between a good day and a great day. I believe you can never, ever be greater than how you choose to see yourself. So are you seeing your fullest potential? Or might there be something even more waiting to be expressed into the world? So let's start with your clothing because clothing really does count. 
To be honest, it's your clothing, your jewelry, your shoes, your hair. And if you wear makeup, it all counts. You are presenting an image of self-expression in those seven seconds. That's all we have, seven seconds. What if you let people meet you intimately, immediately? When I say that, I mean, what if you expressed your truest self through your clothing, your jewelry, your shoes, and your hair? What if you let them see your innermost thoughts and feelings about life? Take a moment and feel into that concept. What's coming up for you? Maybe it's, how do I do that? Maybe it's, I'm already doing a great job at that. I'm guessing you're somewhere in the middle, somewhere in between. During an average week, what does your clothing say about you? Certainly. We want to be dressed properly for the occasion. I personally, I like to err on the side of being just a little too dressed because my desire is to feel glamorous all day, every day. That is my style. That is my signature, even if I'm mopping the floor. That is how I typically present myself. It makes me smile from the inside out. It makes me feel ready to call in a beautiful day, surrounded by beautiful souls with amazing conversations that uplift me in beautiful places. You see, it's intentional. It's my intention to live that life every day because I know life is truly a gift. Something I'm blessed with every morning that I'm able to open my eyes and place my feet on the floor. Having watched my husband fight for his life, I value each and every day. And it makes my day to feel as glamorous as possible. Enough about me. I'm wondering about you. What is your desire and why? What do you wish to create? And if these are things you haven't thought about in years, let me repeat them. What is your desire and why? What do you want to create for people to see in those seven seconds? Don't worry if you can't immediately answer the question. Most people cannot. But it's a great idea to sip your favorite beverage. I've got with me my glass of water today, somewhere lovely, and give it a little bit of thought. Allow yourself to play with this. What is your desire and why? What do you want to create? From there, that's when you can move into your intention. So let's continue. I have a few ideas I want to share with you. Today, it's my desire to inspire you to listen to your soul, feel into what suits you, and then begin to create and express even more beauty. Beauty that you share with others, making the world an even more spectacular place. Did you know that the color you wear closest to your face can enhance or detract from how you look. The study or practice is called color analysis. It can make, it can make you look younger and it's faster and more affordable than a facelift. Simply put, it's a way of learning what colors suit you, your skin tones, your natural hair color, and your eyes. There's a science behind it. When you wear the right color shirt, let's say, you create a glowing white line vertically through the center of your face. And that same glowing white line diagonally, kind of like a peace symbol, I guess, maybe upside down peace symbol around your face. So it illuminates your cheekbones. This creates a healthy glow. The opposite is true when you wear the wrong colors. You create darkness, shadows appear, making you look, well, tired or older or both. Here's a quick story. When I was about 12 years old, I think I was in sixth grade, my mother wore a lot of camel, off-white, earthy colors. She was kind of hip and that was the trend at the time. Then she went and had her colors done and learned she was wearing all the wrong colors. 
as she bought new things, she made sure they were the right colors. She also changed her makeup and immediately she was glowing radiant and she looked younger. It was so funny. She had fun receiving all the compliments. Nobody could figure out what was different about her. They just knew she was glowing. We even went back and looked in photos and had a good laugh of how different she appeared. Knowing your colors is a phenomenal thing. I highly recommend it. I love it so much that I got trained in it years ago. It's something I love to share with people. Let's move on, moving into sparkle and jewelry. Let's start with its history, the history of jewelry. Sure, you might think jewelry, mm, it's unimportant. But if we go back in time and look at what it meant over the centuries, we find that it was more than just decorative. Jewelry conveyed a person's social rank, their affiliations, and or their commitment to matrimony. And there's evidence of societies around the world centuries ago adorning themselves with jewelry to express their desire of beauty. And what was beautiful was clearly different from culture to culture. I read somewhere that jewelry served as currency, both as means of exchange and of expressing yourself. In our last episode and earlier in this episode, we spoke about investing our time, our energy and money into creating beauty, which nourishes us, enriches us, motivates us, inspires us, and that exchange that we have between it that reciprocal reaction. You invest in beauty and it provokes something profound and positive in you. So it was super funny when I read that this morning. Jewelry served as a currency, as means of exchange and one of expressing yourself. I see and feel the exchange and more importantly, I'm hoping you do too. And the part about expressing yourself, well, that is so on brand for exquisitely aligned. This is what it means to be exquisitely aligned. You expressing your truest divine self. You do this outwardly and unapologetically. Maybe that's why I've always had a thing for jewelry, clothing, you get it. Here's another way of thinking about jewelry if I haven't won you over yet. I once heard the owner of a jewelry company, a very successful company, describe her jewelry so perfectly that I almost can repeat it verbatim. She said, if you're making a statement with your clothing, your jewelry is the punctuation. And I thought, wow, yes, I love that. What do you think? If jewelry is the punctuation, what punctuation mark are you choosing? A period or are you like me? An exclamation mark or two or three, right? You have choices. Maybe you like to change it up depending on the day. Or maybe you prefer your jewelry to be constant and consistent from dainty pieces that add a touch of shimmer and shine to over the top with statement pieces. It's all in what you wish to express. What message do you want to get across in those seven seconds? One more thing. Do you have something special collecting dust in your jewelry box or maybe even in your safe? Why not honor the person who gave it to you? by dusting it off and polishing if it needs it and wearing it. Let's move into shoes and your very, very important feet. Your feet, they carry you through the day and through your life. My parents always made sure we had proper fitting and well-made shoes. Now notice, I did not say fashionable. No, they weren't concerned about fashion, only I was. So you can imagine how the conversations went as I grew older. As annoyed as I was at the time, as an adult, I'm 10 times more grateful. 
In yoga, we say the root chakra, which includes your feet, is to keep life vibrant and sustainable. Now think about the times you wore uncomfortable shoes. There was probably nothing vibrant about that, right? So go through your closet and ask yourself and be honest, do these shoes support me in feeling vibrant? Will they support me in living a vibrant life? They may be stunning there sitting on the shelf, sparkling or whatever they are, but do they have you seeing stars and cussing under your breath when you wear them for more than 20 minutes? Listen, even the best of us have made a few wrong purchases in our life. You know what I'm talking about. I know you do. Quick story. I went to school or college in Manhattan, Fashion Institute of Technology, and on the weekends, we would love to venture out and go clubbing or dancing. Our favorite club was just a short walk away called MK's and an affordable cab ride home because you know that's important when you're in college. As any New York, night, uh, New York City nightclub would, the bouncer decided who would get in and when they get in. They selected their guests and I learned the bouncers were trained in looking for beautiful people, but beautiful people who wore nice and in great condition shoes. It was about looking right from head to toe and they meant it. The club was full of beautiful people or as we called it in the industry, women's wear daily, BPs, beautiful people. People who took time and attention with intent, uh, intention to create beauty. And I guess that's exactly what I'm asking of you today. Please value your appearance, invest time, money, your talents, whatever it is, energy, to create beauty in your appearance, in your definition of beauty, not mine, and certainly not Instagram's. Define beauty from within you. What's waiting to be expressed? What's wanting to be expressed to allow people to see your truest self? Because I know that's what you desire. And I think you know that's what you desire too. This is perfect timing and a great lead in. It's time to revisit your closet with the clarity of what message you wish to send in those seven seconds to create a first true, real impression of who you are. I believe your closet, it should support and excite you. It should be easy to find what you need when you need it, right? You can just run in and grab it and be full of things that are the right color, that are the right size, that don't squeeze your feet too tight that you see stars, you get the picture. So let me share a little book that I adore, and let me read the title, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing by Marie Kondo. She has great ideas to offer. So let me just recap a few and then you go read the book if you haven't already. She suggests by starting to discard things and then thoroughly, thoroughly in one swoop organize. And I like that. I believe you're sensitive and intuitive. So I really like when she suggests that you touch the object, like those shoes, and notice what it evokes. Does it make you smile? Does it bring you joy? If the answer is yes and it still fades, keep it. If the answer is no, decide whether it's time to donate it, pass it along, or if it's ready to discard. Maybe you've gotten your money's worth. I also agree with her when she says, tidy up in one shot because it will enhance your mindset. And I absolutely agree. I would like you to enjoy walking into your closet. I would like it to be neat, organized with clothes that make you feel gorgeous and empowered. Let's go move into the, the bathroom where you keep makeup if you wear makeup. And I'm not here to adv advocate for you to wear makeup, please understand. But if you're a woman and you speak on stage or work in sales, you may want to try a little lip gloss or lipstick. 
Did you know that wearing lipstick and some earrings, especially sparkly ones or something a little larger, help keep, keep I can speak English, keep people watching your lips when you speak and they hear better. They listen in more. It's true. Okay, how about perfume or scents? What is your signature scent? Do you have one? Many moons ago, I was at the gym and got a whiff of something divine. I quickly realized it was my friend, the beautiful soul, Larissa. When I told her, wow, Larissa, you smell fantastic today. She turned quickly, and I mean really quickly, and said, I smell good every day. We both started laughing. I'll never forget that magical moment we shared. She's since left this earth at a very young age. She was a gifted teacher while she was here. So today in her honor, I ask you, do you smell good every day? When she said that to me, I realized my answer was no. I only smelled good when we were going out on a date night. She quickly changed my idea around perfume or uh, what do you call it? I'm wearing um, essential oil. So whether you choose essential oil or perfume, maybe set your intention for the day with a beautiful scent. How about our hair? Our hair is something we wear every day. I realize some people don't value hair the way I do. You see, my father is from Germany. His mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, my two uncles, and my aunt, my father's majority side of the family, were hairstylists and owned a couple salons. So growing up, hair was important. It needed to be tidy, and we got regular haircuts. Now, as kids, we were running around with the rest of them and smelly and sweaty and filthy. Our hair was not coiffed for a photo shoot, but my parents valued a good haircut. Valuing by spending time, money, you get the picture on a haircut. Have you considered the fact that you wear your hair, if you have hair, every day? Might it be time for a hair update? Let's move on to one of my favorite things. It is so affordable. Don't forget your smile. There's a children's song titled S-M-I-L-E that my grandmother would sing like an angel. The chorus is, it isn't any trouble to S-M-I-L-E. So smile when you're in trouble, it will vanish like a bubble if you take the time, if you only, I think, take the time to smile. So Nana, I hear you singing from heaven and it still makes me smile. While teaching yoga, I decided every once in a while to dedicate some of my classes to the importance of a smile. You see, in yoga, we have mudras or seals or gestures. So the P symbol, the A-OK -okay sign, they're usually done with our hands to enhance our journey. Smiles remind me of exactly that. They're a gesture. They facilitate our journey but they also facilitate the journey of whoever we choose to share the smile with. Smiles are even more contagious than COVID and the flu. Try it. It's impossible not to smile back. One time I was teaching yoga for a resort in the Dominican Republic and I had a couple join the class. He had never done yoga, she had. At the end of the class, the husband, he couldn't wait to talk to me. He came right up front. He said, Gina, this was my first yoga class. I'm in my 70s and you see that beautiful woman over there. She's my wife of many years. I was attracted to her for her smile. It makes me happy to see her smile even to this day. But today he said, you taught me something. You see, I never smile. And I never thought about how it affects my wife. I guess because I was an engineer in my career, I was very serious. Thank you, Gina, he said, for teaching me to smile. So smile when you see yourself in the mirror, right? Take it further, another step. It's a great way to exercise your facial muscles. 
and then wear that smile everywhere you go and notice what unfolds. Smiling, it creates mystery. Try it sometime. People want to know why you're smiling. I've done it with my kids, even when they had temper tantrums. Your posture, right? We talked about that at the beginning. For a few great ideas, listen to the beginning of Stand Even Taller. You'll hear me more about that in that episode. And then your tone of voice. We'll discuss that when we do the art of creating beauty in your conversations. It's my desire to help you live the life you desire. The one that desires you, the one that calls to you in the wee hours of the night. And that life, it's beautiful. That's the life where you don't downplay yourself. It's the life where you shine and sparkle and you sparkle brilliantly and unapologetically. The one where people stop in their tracks because they want what you have. You exude exquisiteness. You inspire them to do the same. You can never be greater than how you choose to see yourself. Look in the mirror. I guess part of today's message is for you to be seen and recognized. Seen and recognized for your innermost beauty, for it to precede you in those seven seconds. Possibly there was a time in your past where someone used their power or influence in a negative way to deter you from shining brightly. And I sure hope it's not your truth, but if it is, now is the time for you to shine, to glow, to light up your world. How do you see yourself in the mirror? How do you truly see yourself in the mirror? I'd like to ask you to be a bold soul be unafraid to express your truest self. Be sure to invest your resources and attention with intention of creating beauty in your life. Till next time, be even more exquisite.